Metroid 2 The Return of Samus is easily one of the most spectacular experiences on Nintendo's Game Boy. Inside that tiny cartridge was a world that feels just as big and exciting to explore as the original, with all of the new weapons and tools that you'd expect from a sequel. The original Metroid on the NES was a massive success, selling over 2.7 million copies. You'd think that Nintendo would want to immediately get working on a sequel, but for some reason, they didn't. For comparison, Mega Man 2 only sold 1.5 million copies, and that game got four more sequels on the NES. We may have never seen another Metroid if it wasn't for the original producer, the late Gunpei Yokoi. Yokoi was the leader of Nintendo's R&D 1 division, and was known for being an innovator. He had designed the crosspad controller used for the NES, and in 1989, he was the chief engineer for a product Nintendo was developing, codenamed Dot Matrix Game. That's right, it was the original Game Boy. The pack-in game Tetris made the Game Boy a huge hit, and Yokoi's R&D 1 team was looking for their next big Game Boy release. Metroid seemed like a great choice. Many members of the original team were still working in R&D 1, including Samus Aran's original character designer, Hiroji Keotake, who would be promoted to co-director this time. Keotake is one of Nintendo's best character designers of all time, and would go on to create Wario for Super Mario Land 2. Joining him as co-director was Hiroyuki Kimura, who was new to the Metroid franchise but had been working at Nintendo since 1988, and one of his first projects was designing characters for Super Mario Bros. 3. He actually still works on the Super Mario Bros. franchise to this day. The music was composed by Ryoji Yoshitomi, who would go on to do the music for Wario Land, Super Mario Land 3. In Metroid 2, intergalactic bounty hunter Samus indeed returns, and this time she's on another insanely dangerous solo mission. She's landed on the Metroid homeworld, a planet called SR-388, and her goal is to exterminate every last Metroid. While it seems awful to hunt down any species to extinction, the Metroids are extremely vicious creatures that have been used by space pirates as a deadly bioweapon. For a game titled Metroid, it's somewhat surprising that the titular Metroids don't appear until the final moments of the first game. That will not be the case in the sequel. On SR388, the Metroids have mutated and evolved. Samus will encounter many of these monsters on her quest, and for the safety of the galaxy, every last one must be eliminated. Metroid 2 introduces many of Samus's most famous weapons and tools, including the Spazer Laser, Morph Ball Upgrades, and the Space Jump. It was also the first time you could save your game instead of having to enter a password. Of course, Metroid 2 was a huge success when it released in North America in November of 1991. It would go on to sell over 1.7 million copies, and would lead to a proper sequel on the Super Nintendo, Super Metroid, considered by some to be the greatest video game ever made. Over the years, Metroid 2 has been remade multiple times, both unofficially by fans and by Nintendo themselves with their 3DS version, but there is something special about the original that those versions fail to capture. The world feels isolated and haunting. There are some ruins of civilization, but on this planet the Metroids are the dominant species. Everything else is just food. Modern players that attempt this game will still have to deal with all of the challenges retro games are notorious for. The Metroids will attack you mercilessly, 
And while you can save the game, save points do not replenish your health, which can leave you stuck with only a tiny bit of HP. But what if I told you where to find every weapon and upgrade so you'll always be ready for the next battle? What if I told you about secret shortcuts that can let you get key items early? And what if I told you how to defeat every Metroid? Even the monstrous Omegas? Well, on today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and check out YouCanBeatVideoGames.com for episode lists, news, and official You Can Beat Video Games merchandise. Let's get started. All right, Metroid 2 The Return of Samus. As we land here on the planet SR388, it's nice to see that Samus actually brought a bit of equipment this time, including her Morph Ball and 30 missiles. If you shoot off some missiles here, you can actually go into the ship to restore your missiles back to 30, and there's also an energy recharger in there as well. However, once we get deeper into the planet, we won't be returning to the ship for a very long time. That flying enemy is called a Yumbo, and the bouncing one is called a Hornode. You can destroy those if you want or just avoid them, because we're going to be jumping down into the next area where we'll find the game's first shortcut. We can roll right through this wall and that will save you a bit of time. If you finish this game faster, there are different endings that you can see, so not wasting time is a good idea. If you just shoot straight downwards, you should be able to blast through that area. And at this point, we could go left or right. The way that we actually need to go is to the left, but I want to show you what's over here to the right. You can also save your game over here, so that is something. But you'll notice that in this room, there's a bunch of water at the bottom of the screen, and the water has fizzy bubbles in it, which means that it's acidic and will damage Samus if she touches it. By some sort of dark magic, the Metroids that we're trying to exterminate are connected to the planet's tectonics, and whenever a certain number are removed, the acidic water will disappear from these chambers. To clear that water, we only need to take out one Metroid, and to find it, we're going to go over here where we had that choice to go left or right, and this time we're going to head over to the left. Considering what we know about Metroids, you would hope that Samus would have at least brought the ice beam with her, and probably bombs in case the Metroids attached and she needed to get away. But we didn't bring any of that, and we also only brought 30 missiles, while the scanner in the lower right corner shows that there are 39 Metroids that we need to destroy. We know that each Metroid takes a lot more than one missile each, so you would have hoped that Samus would have brought significantly more firepower to this party. In any case, we're about to encounter our first Metroid, and as luck would have it, the Metroids have evolved to be less dangerous. To get a free hit, you can try to launch a missile before the Metroid even hatches, but the easiest way to defeat this Alpha is to just do a few small hops and launch five missiles at it. The Alpha Metroids are actually pretty easy to defeat, and up here you can restore your health and missiles to full. After defeating the first Metroid, we'll feel an earthquake, and that is going to drain that acidic water out of the chamber we were in before. So make your way across, take out any Yumbos or Hornodes that are in your way, and don't worry about the water in this chamber, 
if it doesn't have those fizzy bubbles in it, then it's safe to jump into. Over here, we're going to head back to the right. Most of the Metroids that we're going to fight in this game are the Alpha variety, so that's good. Those ones are not too difficult to defeat, but there are six different varieties of Metroids that we will encounter. For the first two phases of the game, it's all Alpha Metroids. We won't meet our first Gamma Metroid until we get to phase number three. Those earthquakes usually signify that we have cleared all of the Metroids in the current phase, and we can now move on to the next one. So that's what we're going to do. There was only one Metroid in phase one, but there will be quite a few more in phase two. This corridor over here on the right will lead us there. And remember, this is the one that was full of water before, but not anymore. Just cross through that chamber and head to the right. As you duck under the flying sea rocks and watch out for the wall-clinging Mohik enemies, you'll notice that this chamber is no longer filled with that acidic liquid, so now we can delve deeper into the planet. You do want to be very careful around those Mohik enemies. They can deal you some serious damage this early in the game. Over here, we'll find another passage that has that acidic water in it, so we can't go any deeper right now. Heading across here will take us to the area marked B on the map, and we're going to follow the path which will lead us to a large shaft that we'll need to climb up. After that, there's going to be a long tunnel that we'll need to pass through. And in here, these enemies that float up are called shoot leeches, and shoot leeches actually can hurt you pretty badly if you get hit by them, but if you don't get very close, they won't be able to touch you, so shoot them from far away, and never get too close to a shoot leech. Over here is that passage that we need to climb up. That fly-like enemy is called a mumbo. And that prickly one is a needler, so that shouldn't be too surprising. The needlers cling to the walls, just like many other classic Metroid enemies. If we run through this hallway, we'll reach another vertical shaft, and in this one we could go up or down. If we go down, there's a whole bunch of Metroids for us to fight, so it's better for us to go up first, where we'll be able to get some better equipment. The enemies that constantly spawn from those divots are called Gaurons, and much like similar enemy types in the first game, if you don't collect the items that they drop, they'll stop spawning until that item disappears. They're also pretty good if you need to farm them for health or missiles, but it's usually better to just look for a missile battery or an energy charge if you need to do that. We're not ready to climb up on top yet, so we're going to head into this room where we can save the game. And then here we're going to head downwards and take the path to the left. Over in this room we're going to find some Chozo ruins. I wonder if Samus knew there would be Chozo ruins here, and maybe she had some intel that indicated there would be bombs located on this planet because they seem very important for our mission. Once you have the bombs, we're going to use them right away, so drop a few bombs right above this flashing missile upgrade, and that is the first missile upgrade in the game. There are 22 of these to find, so there are quite a few more that we're going to need to locate if we want to get maximum power. Each missile upgrade that we find will add 10 to Samus's maximum capacity, so if we find all 22 upgrades, we'll be able to hold a whopping 250 missiles. If you take out that wall fire enemy, jump on top of it and morph into a ball, we can roll through that wall, and then we'll need to use our bombs to get through, where we'll find the game's first energy tank. The first energy tank that we find doubles Samus's health, so yeah, that's a great upgrade. And once you have it, we want to drop down this shaft, and we're going to take the path on the lower left again. 
This time we'll be met with another one of those doors that we need to open up using our missiles. It takes five missiles to shoot through the door. And on the other side, we'll find our first weapon upgrade. This is the Ice Beam. There are four different beam upgrades that we're going to be able to find in this game, and each time you find one, it will overwrite whatever gun you already had. Although you could go back and find any beam weapon that you already found in its original location. Up here, we're going to head over to the right, and in this room, we can find some more missile upgrades. So we'll want to take this opportunity to grab those. This one can be sort of tricky to get, not the one at the bottom, the one above it. To get it right now, we don't have the spider ball upgrade or the high jump boots. So to get it, the easiest way to do it is to take out that little removable block and keep jumping until it catches Samus and damage boosts her up to where the missile upgrade is. It may take a few tries, but once you have it, we're going to head back over here to the left. In just this small area, we doubled our health, we got 30 more missiles, and we got the ice beam which can freeze enemies or their projectiles, like the fire that those wall fires spit out. Once we climb to the top though, we're going to head back outside. Watch out for these shoot leeches, which are much easier to deal with now that we have the ice beam. And over here, we're going to be able to go through this small corridor by using a bomb when we're in our morph ball form. Just hold to the right after you plant the bomb and it will bounce you up and we'll be able to drop down here where we'll find another upgrade for our morph ball. This is the spider ball. The spider ball is an essential item that you can engage while in ball form by pressing down and that will allow Samus to stick to the wall. The controls for this can be a little bit awkward. As long as you don't let go of whichever direction you're holding, you'll just keep moving in that direction. But if you do let go of the direction because you don't want to get hit by an enemy or something, you may need to reassess which direction moves you which way. And sometimes if you're at the intersection of two walls, like in a corner, it can be very awkward to move out of there. So I like to try to stop on a flat surface when possible. Using the spider ball, we can climb up here where we'll encounter another alpha metroid. So switch on your missiles and shoot one off as you jump towards the enemy. You may be able to get a free hit that way. But the easiest way to fight this guy is to get below it and point upwards as you launch missiles into its soft belly. Once you've defeated the Alpha Metroid, you can use your spider ball to climb up this wall and work your way around. If we're careful, we'll be able to refill our health up here and even refill our missiles. This first Golug enemy that you see flying around won't hit you, but there's going to be more up here on the ceiling that can hit Samus, and if you're hit when you're in spider ball form, you'll be knocked off and you'll fall from the ceiling down below. So make your way across, carefully avoid this Golug enemy. To avoid these guys, I like to wait back here, and then whenever it's close, that's when I start rolling to the left. So wait down here and roll now. Carefully make your way past it when you're on top of that little plateau and we need to pass another one if we want to get to the missile battery which should be right over here to the left. There it is. Don't mess it up now. If you do mess it up you can go back to the right and try to climb up. You may not need this missile battery right now, so if you're doing good on missiles, don't worry about it too much if you fall from the roof. Once you have it though, we want to bomb through this rock and make our way inside where we're going to be able to find even more missiles. There are two more missile upgrades hidden in this room, and if you look at the map, 
you can see that there is another way to get into this room from the right side. So if you fell off pretty early when you were trying to go across the ceiling, you could enter this room from the right instead of the left. Just keep that in mind, but we do want to exit from the left side, no matter how we got in here. At this point, we've collected all of the important equipment from Phase 2, and now we need to head back towards the beginning, where there's a few Metroids that we need to take care of. It's only a bunch of Alpha Metroids that we're about to fight, though. So, oh no, not Alpha Metroids. Whatever shall we do? Yeah, I think we're gonna be fine. If you freeze these enemies, they will not keep spawning. So consider that as you head across and make your way to the left. This is the chamber where the path diverged before, so you just want to drop down and take this path at the bottom on the right. We can already see that a Metroid is hatched in this area, and if we use our bombs, we'll be able to pass through those rocks. We could head to the right through this room, but because we have the spider ball, we could take advantage of a shortcut and spider ball up this wall, where we'll also find a hidden energy recharge. So just use your spider ball to get onto the bottom of that platform, and when you touch that energy recharge, it will bring you back to full HP, and then you can just roll over here where we'll find some sand to blast through. Just carve out a path and make your way to the right. Most of the Metroids in Phase 2 are congregating in this general area, but the one nice thing about the evolved Metroids in this game is that they will only attack Samus in a one-on-one -on -one situation and will never, ever gang up on her. Very friendly Metroids. Over here on the right, we're going to fight another one of those Alpha Metroids. So jump and try to hit it with a missile as you enter the room, and then just get below it where you'll be able to shoot upwards and finish it off. Once that Alpha has been defeated, we're going to head back to the left. We want to head all the way across this chamber with the shoot leeches and get back to that area where we saw the hatched Metroid larva. That's where the path split before and we went to the right. This time we want to head to the left, which will take us even deeper into phase two. So there's that hatched larva. We're going to head here to the left. Just drop straight down, and we'll head to the right first. Two more Alpha Metroids remain in this phase before we'll trigger the next Earthquake. And there's one right here. Just like the previous one, you want to get below it and try to shoot up into its soft underbelly. Once he's been defeated, we'll head back over to the left. And the final Alpha Metroid is located over on the right side. Don't drop down below there, you'll take some damage. And just make your way across, trying to stay up on top of these platforms. If you do fall down below, you want to jump out as quickly as possible. Head through into this room, where we'll find the last Alpha Metroid of Phase 2. If we just stay right up here and take a few short hops, it's not too hard to put the five missiles that we need into its face and then we'll just head back to the right, where we'll feel the next earthquake. That earthquake marks the end of Phase 2, so it's time to move on to Phase 3. Before we head over there though, I want to show you a secret shortcut. This shortcut can be used right now to get you more quickly into Phase 3, but theoretically you could have done this shortcut right after you get the Spider Ball. It may be possible to do it before getting the spider ball, but I don't recommend it. You could end up stuck. But by doing this shortcut, we're going to be able to get right into phase three without going through the area that we normally would have to cross that has that acid pool. So by using this trick, you definitely could get into the phase three area early and maybe get some of those upgrades before fighting the Metroids here in Phase 2. You will need to fight all of the Metroids in the game though to be able to beat it. If you don't kill all the Metroids, 
at the end, there will be a wall that will block you from getting into the final area. Normally, we'd go to the left as we climb this shaft, but if you're going for the shortcut, we want to go all the way to the top and cut across this room to the right. So just quickly get across here. We want to go all the way to the top of phase two. That's where we're going to be able to perform the shortcut. The way that we do shortcuts in this game is by morphing into a ball and then we're going to be mashing the select button. By doing that, you'll be able to open up these strange holes in the ground, and some of them will lead you to interesting areas. Some of the paths will open up the way to hidden worlds that can only be accessed by taking advantage of this glitch, and others, like this one, will lead to shortcuts. So you want to come all the way up here, which is all the way at the top. So climb all the way up here, and here's where you want to turn into a ball and just keep moving left and right. It actually showed up once already and we missed it. But you're looking for a hole to open up on the right side, so that's what it looks like. And once you get it, you want to drop in, make your way over to the left, and here is the column that you want to be in because you can shoot right through there. And this is phase three. You'll be able to see when we take the normal path how much time this actually saves you. Over here, we're going to find one of those red missile doors, and when we open it up, we'll find another Chozo statue, and this one contains a strange enemy called an Arachnus, which can only be damaged with your bombs, and once he's destroyed, you'll be able to get another upgrade, the Spring Ball. So by using this shortcut, you can get to the Spring Ball very quickly, and you can even do it out of order, but let's take a look at the normal path. So in this room, we're going to head to the left instead of going all the way to the top and going to the right. So make your way across this hallway. We're heading back to a few of the chambers that were between phase one and phase two, and before they were filled with that acidic water, but you'll notice right away when we get back down there, that the acidic water is gone. So in here, those shoot leeches used to be jumping out of a pool of water, but they're not anymore. As we head back across to the left, we'll notice that a new path is opened up in the next room, and this path continues downward, deeper into the planet. This transitional passage bends to the right and then back to the left, and once you get under the ledge, you can drop down to the bottom, avoiding any Mohik enemies that you see patrolling the platforms. Carefully head over to the right and then drop down. This is going to take us into Phase 3, and Phase 3 has a lot of great equipment for us to find. If you thought there was good stuff in Phase 2, the things that we find in Phase 3 are even better. That doesn't mean that we won't be met with some resistance though, and you see that hatched Metroid larva down below, which signifies that the enemy is nearby. Head up here, and we're going to climb this passage filled with Yumbos. They're pretty easy to avoid or freeze with your ice beam as you jump up. These Yumbo guys always reminded me a little bit of the tiny chainsaw enemies that attack you in the tight corridors of Metal Man stage in Mega Man 2. There are some strange platforms in this area. Those things are called Septogs, and while they can be used as platforms, you can mostly just avoid them and head into this room, where we'll fight yet another Alpha Metroid. Try to get below it and attack it from underneath, or if you can't do that, jump up into the air and launch a few missiles into its face. It only takes five to kill it. And then we can head over to the left, which will take us to the main area of the phase. We see some new enemies here called Senjus, which can be easily taken care of using our ice beam. And if we head over here to the left, we'll find a save chamber. So just press the start button to save the game. And then we're going to head back out to the right because we want to get up on top of this structure where we're going to find a hidden missile upgrade. 
So use your spider ball, but you want to take out that send you enemy first because it might hit you when you're in spider ball form and knock you back down. There's a few shoot leeches up here. You can just get underneath them and freeze them. And then we want to use our spider ball, but watch out for this send you. You need to get up into this little tunnel, which leads to that first missile upgrade. There were six missile upgrades in phase two, and this is the first one that we found here in phase three, where there are eight to locate. Eight is the most missile upgrades of any single phase in the game, so once you have the first one, we're going to head back to that save room and make our way across to the left. This water is safe to step into, so don't worry about getting damaged by it. And in this room, there's a single enemy, but it can be a dangerous one if you're not careful. This robot is known as an Autrack, and it will launch lasers at you pretty quickly, so your best bet is to just try to jump over it and keep making your way to the left. You'll find another save point over here, and once we emerge on the left side, we want to head down to the bottom where we're going to find a very important armor upgrade. So drop down through the middle. You'll see some water down here. This water is safe to enter. It's not the bubbly kind. Take out a few needlers and head over to the right. At the very beginning of this watery area, there's another missile upgrade to find. So you can grab it by using your spider ball. And then we're just going to drop down to the bottom where we'll be able to roll through to the right and head over here where we're going to fight yet another Alpha Metroid. We should be very good at fighting Alpha Metroids this time and by staying in this narrow corridor you can jump and just shoot whenever your head hits the top of the corridor which will make it easy to hit the Metroid. After he's defeated you want to roll through this wall and come up here where we can bomb through a few of these bricks and find the third missile upgrade of phase three. So there's five more to find in here. Once you have it, just roll back the same way. And we want to make our way up and through this passage above so the spider ball can climb through this tube and bring us out at the top. So just spider ball on through. When you get to the top, you can turn off the spider ball, which will make you move faster. And we're going to cut across here to the left where we'll find another one of those red missile doors. And on the other side, uh, where's the power up at? Well, it's actually hidden down here. You need to bomb through the floor. Then we can use the spider ball to go through the wall and the power-up is actually hidden underneath all of these orbs, which would all be the same color if you were playing on the Game Boy, but here on the GameCube, you'll notice that the one we're looking for is red, and you don't want to bomb that one, you want to jump up into the air and shoot down onto it. This is the Varia suit. This is an optional upgrade in this game. It's not like in Super Metroid where you'll eventually get to some very hot areas where you'll have to have the Varia suit or you'll die. But you definitely want it because it reduces the damage that Samus takes from enemies. And that is going to be very helpful moving forward whenever we fight the more dangerous Metroid types. Sure, we probably don't need better armor when we're fighting Alpha Metroids, but it won't be long before we're fighting the Gamma variety, and then there's going to be Zeta and Omega Metroids, which are very dangerous, and we'll be very happy to have any armor we can get our hands on when it's time to fight those guys. Just hop up through the water, and we're going to make our way back over to where that save point was, we need to continue up on top of the structures here in phase three, but it would probably be a good idea to save the game before we do that, now that we have that Varia suit and we collected a few more missile upgrades. So we'll just pop in here, quickly save the game, and then we're going to go back out to the left. 
if we were to go all the way to the left here, would be able to go deeper into phase 3 where we'd find the bulk of the Metroids in this area. But if you remember from when we went on that shortcut before, we haven't found the Spring Ball upgrade yet. Watch out for these Senju enemies as you use the Spider Ball to climb this wall. You may need to pause to avoid them for just a moment and then get up on top of the platform where you can unmorph from the ball and take them out with your ice beam. Once you're up here, you want to head across to the right and we want to climb up this wall as well. There's more stuff inside if we bomb that rock, but we want to get this spring ball first. So we're going to come all the way up here and when we get to the top, this area may look somewhat familiar. This is where we dropped down to when we took that shortcut. There's a few shoot leeches and some blob launcher plants. So just try to avoid them and drop down here, where we'll make our way to the left, go through one of those missile doors, and then it will be time to fight the Arachnus. Arachnus will bounce around the room in ball form, and so you'll also want to use your ball, try to anticipate where Arachnus is going to land, and put a bunch of bombs there, so whenever it unmorphs from its ball form, it'll take a bunch of bomb blasts right in the face. Once Arachnus is defeated, you'll be able to grab the spring ball, and now whenever you're in ball form, you can just press the jump button to be able to jump. This is an upgrade I would have loved to have had in the original Metroid. Once you have that spring in your step, we're going to head back to the left to where that rock was that we need to bomb through. If you're fighting these blob launchers, the only way to damage them with the ice beam is to jump above them and shoot straight downward at the plant's middle. If you do kill them though, they often drop items that restore a good bit of health. Down here we can bomb through that rock, and in this room, we will encounter yet another Alpha Metroid. For this one, I like to try to launch one right as it emerges, so shoot a missile at it, then drop down into this area where you can get below the Metroid, and well that didn't work out completely as planned, but it worked well enough. So once the Metroid is defeated, You'll want to bomb through down here, if I can hit the right spot. And then use your spring ball to jump up. You could use the spider ball too, that would be fine. But it is a bit faster to just spring up and then drop down through this tube. Where we have two ways we can go. It looks like a dead end over here on the left, but if you jump up in ball form, and then use your bombs, you can actually blow through the wall where we'll find some of these autoed enemies, and then another missile door. Behind it is a new beam weapon, the Wave Beam. While there will definitely be some situations in this game where you'll need the Ice Beam, the Wave Beam is one of the best weapons that we'll find. Its wave pattern is very good at penetrating enemy shields, so there are a number of enemy types where having the wave beam is the best weapon to fight them. Once you have it, although it is certainly optional, you want to make your way to this room where we can destroy a lot of these white boxes, and if we destroy the ones on the right side, you can pass through the wall and drop down into this area where we can go through another missile door and find a very handy item, the high jump boots. With all of the better morph ball technology that we have in this game, like the spider ball and the spring ball, I don't know that the high jump boots are quite as important as they were in the original game, but they are still something that you want to have, and you'll notice their usefulness right away when you bomb through the wall on the left into this room, where we can now very easily jump up and collect this energy tank. No more trying to damage boost whenever that box reappears like we did before when we were collecting a missile in a similar position. You may have noticed that there were some missiles on the other side of a wall to the left. We're not going to be able to collect them from this side though, so we want to head back the way that we came, use your bombs to get through, 
and go back to the right. There are three more missile upgrades in this little area that we'll want to find. So use your spider ball to climb up the left wall. That will help you avoid the wall fires on the right side. You won't even notice those guys. And just roll on over to the left where we can break through those white boxes and take the passage on the lower left side. In here, we'll find two more of those missile upgrades. You can see how effective the wave beam is against these enemies and how nice it is to be able to jump higher with the high jump boots. So grab those missile upgrades and then make your way over to the left where we'll find another exit and we'll be able to drop down to the bottom, head over to the right, and grab that last missile upgrade that was on the other side of the wall that we couldn't reach before. Once you have that, we want to make our way out of this area, and that is going to involve climbing up on some of those white boxes that we can destroy with our gun. So it's not as bad as it was in the original game in the area that people often call the climb. We can jump much higher in this game, so it's going to be a lot easier in this one than it was in the original. Try to avoid these wall fires as you make your way to the right, although that was somewhat unsuccessful. Once we get out of here, we're going to head to the far left side of the Phase 3 map. We need to take out all the Metroids in this area, and that will open up Phase 4. Right now, we've collected all the good equipment, so we don't have to worry about getting any more stuff. We just have to worry about finishing off the enemies. So, we'll just head back through here. Here's that room where we went through the wall to find the wave beam. If you jump up with your spring ball and then press down to grab onto the wall with your spider ball, that'll make it easy to get up here into this tube. And then we'll just spider ball our way up to the top and roll on back to the left. This is that room where we fought the Alpha Metroid. A few bombs should get us up through here, and we'll head back on through to the left. You'll remember this area where we needed to bomb through with a rock, so we'll do that again. And then we're just going to run over to the left and take a nice jump off the left side. We can shoot downwards using our wave beam to take out some of those Senju enemies. We just collected a whole bunch of stuff, so it's a good idea to save the game, especially considering we're about to go into the most dangerous part of the phase. Down at the bottom of phase three, we're going to encounter some Metroids that are not the alpha variety. These ones are the Gamma Metroids, and they are much more dangerous. In here, we're going to drop straight down. You can use your wave beam to take out any enemies in your way and head over to the right. Watch out for those Yumbos and take the path over here to the left. You could go to the right there, but we're going to go to the left first. In here, there's another Alpha Metroid. If you drop down into the bottom, you can easily get it from below. Remember, it takes five missiles to kill those guys. We have a lot of missiles to work with at this point, but you're going to notice that some of the more evolved Metroid mutations take a lot more missiles to kill. The first Gamma Metroid that we're going to fight is in this sandy room in the lower left. After you blast through some sand, you'll see that Gamma Metroid. The best way to fight this guy is to head back a bit to the right, try to get up on a ledge that you can create by shooting the sand, and if the Metroid goes above you, shoot it from below. Otherwise, you should be able to just kneel down and blast it in the face. The Gamma Metroids can be hit from below or from the front or behind, but sometimes the spinning electrical field that they generate will block your shots. If you get low on health, there's an energy recharge on the far left. Even if you're fighting against that Gamma Metroid and you start to die, you may just want to try to roll past it and refill your health, and then you can go back in and try to fight it again. Over here on the far right, we're going to meet an Alpha Metroid, which is pretty easy compared to the one we just fought. Over here, just shoot it with five missiles, 
And once that alpha is defeated, you can head back to the left. And we're going to start climbing out of here, where we can face the final two Metroids. Just shoot through the sand. And we're going to climb back up. If you need to use that energy charge, remember it's down in the bottom left. So if you've taken significant damage from any of these bosses, don't be afraid to go back down there and recharge. Head over here to the right. This time we're going to go to the right side of this chamber. And inside there is another Gamma Metroid. This one's in a slightly more difficult area to fight. Once again, shooting it from the front is probably the least effective way to fight them. Whenever you shoot it from below, your shots are more likely to not be blocked by that electrical field. And if you can shoot it in the back, that works well too. So try to get below that gamma and launch a bunch of missiles into its underside. It seems like we've been almost everywhere in Phase 3 at this point. But the last Metroid is hiding in a very sneaky area. To get to him, we'll want to backtrack up this shaft. So make your way past the Yumbo enemies, shooting them with your wave beam if you need to. And this time we're going to climb all the way to the top of this area. We're also going to find the last missile upgrade that we haven't found yet. And this one is very well hidden. So keep climbing all the way to the top. When you get to the top, you'll see an exit on the right side. That's where we're headed. We're going to jump up onto this ledge and then engage our spider ball, which will allow us to climb across this ceiling. Up here, we'll find a spot where we need to use a bomb, and I recommend using your bomb and then moving decently far away from it but not so far away that it goes off the screen. You want to be able to see the explosion, but you don't want to be caught in it because it can cause your spider ball to disengage. Now, if you're good, you can just press down again and grab back onto the wall, but it's much safer to just move away from your bombs after you plant them. And up here, we'll find the last missile upgrade in this area. Once you have it, we're going to bomb back down to the bottom. Make sure before you plant the last bomb that you're ready to use your spider ball because we want to move across the ceiling to the right. That's going to bring us to a higher ledge and that's where we'll find the last Metroid in this area. So follow along the ceiling with your spider ball. Spider ball, spider ball, doing the things that a spider ball can. <laughs> spider ball. And just make your way up here. This is not the ledge you're looking for. It's this larger one up at the top. Once you're up here, head over to the left. And this is just a lowly alpha Metroid. You'll notice that you can drop through that shell for some reason. And it shouldn't be too hard to get below this one, which will make it pretty easy to kill. And that's it. That was the final Metroid in phase three. Before we move on though, there's another shortcut that I'd like to show you. So if you want to do the shortcut, just take a big jump over here to the right, and we're going to climb this wall. We want to make our way over to the far right side, near where we found the first missile upgrade in this area. If you don't want to use this shortcut, you of course could go back out the same way that we came into phase three, that's going to lead us to another area where the water will have drained out and you'll be able to go deeper into the caves. But if you want to check out this shortcut, head over here and drop down on the right side. So this is that area right below where that first missile upgrade was. And we just want to roll into a ball. Go left and right while rapidly tapping select, and while well, it really appeared quickly that time, you'll end up in this small little tunnel, and then bomb your way through to the right and drop down, and now we're in phase four. And if you come down here, that will bring you to the phase four save point, 
and you'll be very close to where the space jump is from this area. Of course, you can use this way to get into phase four early, but you do need to kill all of the Metroids to be able to beat the game. If you don't take the shortcut, we're just gonna drop all the way back down to the bottom, make our way to the right into the save room. Certainly a good idea to save the game. And you'll notice that this time when we go through the room with that aw track enemy, he is very easy to destroy with our wave beam, especially if you kneel down. So just make your way through this isolated chamber and we'll emerge on the right side where we'll find another save point and we'll be able to go out the same way that we came in. And there it is. Save the game if you feel like it. We did just save a few moments ago, no big deal. And we're just going to head through to the right where we met the very first Alpha Metroid in Phase 3. If you thought those Gamma Metroids were difficult, then I have some bad news for you, because we are going to be fighting a whole lot of them in Phase 4. Head across this room. It's kind of weird if you stand on this guy, it'll actually drop you into the sand. I'm not sure why that works that way, but in any case, make your way over here to the right and make your way down this shaft. You may remember when we came through this way before that there was a spot where there was a hatched Metroid shell and there was some water over to the right of it. We'll use our spring ball to jump up through here and here is where that area was, but now the water is gone. So we'll be able to drop down through and make our way through this passage, which leads to phase four. The wave beam is really good at taking out the enemies here, so shoot them recklessly with it. And use your ball form to get under that wall. You'll notice that there's some water on the left side that hasn't leaked out of the cavern yet, so we'll need to trigger another earthquake to get through that way. And instead, we're going to make our way over here to the right and follow this path. You'll want to get very familiar with this particular room because we will be crossing through it a number of times to get to different areas in the game. This time we're going to drop all the way to the bottom and then head over to the right where we'll encounter another new enemy type. This guy is called a Halzin and he has shields on the left and right side so if you weren't using the wave beam you would have to shoot directly into the middle of that creature from above or below it. With the wave beam, however, you can shoot right through a halls and shield, and there are actually a lot of those enemies in this game, and it's one of the reasons why I like the wave beam so much. You'll see a path on the right side here, but you want to jump past that first one and go all the way to the top first, where you'll find a second path to the right. Just like in the last two phases, most of the equipment in Phase 4 is located in one area, while most of the Metroids are located in another. And just like in the previous two phases, we want to get all of the good gear first, and then we can take out that big cluster of Metroids to unlock the next phase. So make your way through to the right, and when you get to this room, you want to jump down and use your wave beam to take out any enemies in your way. And if you blast through this sand, you'll find a missile battery, which you can use to restore your missiles to their full capacity. You may want to remember where that missile battery is. It's a pretty easy one to get to, and if you ever run low on missiles, that's an easy way to refill them. Once you use that missile battery to refill your missiles, you can use your spider ball to climb up the right side of this structure. Once you get up to the top, you just wanna cut straight across to the right and drop down on the other side, where you'll find some more sand to blast through. And this time, when we blast through to the left, we'll find another Chozo statue. And this one contains a very useful upgrade. This is the Space Jump. The Space Jump is a very helpful item that essentially lets Samus fly. To use it, you need to get a spinning jump going, 
And then when you see Samus start to drop out of the air, just press the A button again and she'll vault up higher. You can use this to reach extreme heights in the air, but if you stop spinning, you'll need to land and do a big jump again to get the space jump restarted. Use your space jump to get up the side of this area, and you'll see there's another hulls and enemy up here on the top. And if you make your way across to the right, we can drop down this shaft, and this area will look familiar from that shortcut that we just took. We didn't grab the missile upgrade when we did the shortcut before, so you want to dig down in the sand here and grab this upgrade. But when you're done with that, head on over here to the left where we can save our game, and then we want to make our way back out the same way that we came in. There are more items to be found over to the left of that save point, but we're going to be coming back for those. So use your spider ball to climb up out of here, and then we're going to head to the far right of this area. Over here, we want to morph into a ball and then roll off the edge, but you want to make enough space so you don't hit those spikes. When you see that missile upgrade, push over to the left and then use your spider ball to stick to the wall. We can bomb through this rock, and when you go through this tunnel, we'll find our third energy tank. You'll need to use a bomb to get through, and then you can either jump back up there or use your spider ball to get up to where the actual energy tank is. However you do it is fine, just try to get in there and grab yourself another bar of health. Once we have this very important energy tank, you can drop down to the bottom and don't forget to use your spider ball to collect that missile upgrade that we saw from the outside. This brings our total missiles up to 190, and there are only six more missile upgrades left to be found in the entire game. We'll be able to find two more of them here in Phase 4, and the last four missile upgrades are all in Phase 7. There's not a lot of equipment in Phases 5, 6, 8, and 9. Once you have the missile upgrade in the energy tank, you're going to head back down here to the bottom. And at the bottom of this shaft, we're going to be able to face off with a Gamma Metroid. I like to go all the way to the bottom to fight this guy, and try to lure him over to the left corner, where it should be pretty easy to get underneath this Gamma, and then light him up with a bunch of missiles. That leaves us with only 25 more Metroids to defeat. So once you've killed that Gamma, climb back up out of this shaft, and we're going to need to use our Space Jump to get back out of this area. We'll head over to the left, dig through some of this sand, and this is where we need to use the Space Jump, because the spikes on the left side and the proboscum enemies on the right will prevent us from using our spider ball. Although if you do lose your space jump momentum, try to land on those proboscum enemies. They won't damage you, but sometimes they will drop out from under your feet. Now would be a great time to save the game, and then we're going to head into this area that I mentioned before. There's some off track enemies here, which can be dealt with by jumping up above them and rapidly shooting the wave beam down on top of them. We want to make our way over here to the left. These bouncing frog monsters are called Autodes. And over here, we can blast through this missile door, where we'll find another beam upgrade. This one is called the Spazer Laser. The Spazer fires three lasers in a wide pattern, which is pretty nice for fighting enemies. However, I'm not sure that it's quite as good as the Wave Beam, because it doesn't have the armor penetrating power that that beam has. Still, the Spazer is pretty good, especially against these Autrak enemies. So you'll want to space jump up and kill that one there before you try to space jump again and get up to this ledge on the right. Drop down here, and in this lower area we're going to face another Gamma Metroid. 
If you have your missiles on, you may be able to hit it a few times as you drop above it, but the easiest way to fight this guy is to get on this platform on the right side and just get underneath the gamma and try to shoot it as quickly as you can with your missiles. If it gets right in front of you, that's almost as good. You can shoot it horizontally instead. If we head over to the right, we'll pass an autoed enemy and find another missile upgrade. There's only one more missile upgrade to find here in phase four. Make your way to the right, and I think this divot here is a glitch that should not actually be there. And you can use your space jump or just damage boost off of these spikes to get up to the top and make your way over to the left. That monster is called a shirk and it can be defeated, but this one that drops fire is called an autom and we will not be able to kill that one. Use your spider ball to climb up this wall and use your bombs to open up a hole, which will lead us to a hidden area on the left. Down here, we're going to be able to face another Alpha Metroid. This one's definitely on our list, so take him out with five missiles just as we always do. But that easy Metroid fight isn't the only thing down here. If you keep heading over to the left, you'll be able to jump over some pillars, use your spider ball here if necessary, and we'll be able to grab our fourth energy tank. That's going to give us a total of almost 500 health to work with, which will be very helpful as we get deeper into the game. Use your spider ball to head back out. There's nothing else to find down in this small area, so you'll head back over to the right and use your spider ball to climb up this wall on the right side and head back through. Once again, you'll have to use bombs when you get to the end, so roll over, use a bomb right there to get through the wall, and then drop down. Remember that you can't kill the Autom enemy, but you can kill the Shirk. From here, we're going to make our way back down through this room with the spikes, and over to the left. If we keep going to the left in this room, you can actually go through the wall on the left side. And once we go through the wall over there, we're going to be able to fight another Gamma Metroid and we'll be able to find the fourth beam upgrade. So if you've been wondering what the fourth beam is, you'll be able to find out soon. But I think the easiest way to deal with this Gamma is to stay down in this lower right corner. And as the Gamma approaches you, just shoot it in the face with as many missiles as you can. Some of them might get blocked by its electrical field, but we have a lot of missiles to work with, so I don't think we're going to run out. Once he is beaten, we can head over here to the left. If you have a gun that you already like, this is certainly optional, but if you'd like to try out the fourth and final beam, this is the plasma beam. The plasma beam shoots a very focused straight beam of energy that has a lot of power behind it, but is a little bit more difficult to aim than some of the other weapons. It can actually penetrate through enemies that it hits, so it can hit multiple enemies with a single shot, but it does not penetrate through shields like the wave beam does. Once you have all the upgrades down here, we're going to jump up through the ceiling here to this room where we fought a Gamma Metroid. And this time we want a spider ball up the right wall because there's a fourth missile upgrade hidden here in phase four. And this is where it's located. Use a bomb to go up into this small rectangular chamber and then bounce up through the wall on the left to find the missile upgrade. We should now have a maximum of 210 missiles. Pretty good. From here, we can use our space jump to get back up the left side, or you can use the spider ball if you're less confident with your space jumping ability. I do recommend trying to take out some of these enemies before jumping up here, unless you wanna use their lasers for a little bit of a damage boost. 
That's one way you could possibly get to the top, but it's much safer to just kill a few of those guys first. Up here, we'll want to save the game one more time, shoot through the sand, and take the exit in the top. The easiest way to exit through here is probably to use your ball form and then just spider ball up the side. Although if you're good with the space jump, you can just space jump out of there as well. Now that we've collected all of the items in phase four, it's time to head back towards the entrance of the phase where we can take a different path that leads to a whole bunch of Metroids to fight. As you head back across this large chamber to the left, don't forget that in the lower left corner, if you drill down through the sand, you'll be able to find one of those missile batteries, which can refill our missiles to the max. We're about to be fighting a bunch of Metroids, so we're going to be wanting as many missiles as we can carry. Once you've refilled your missiles, head through this corridor on the left. The Yumi enemies that pop out of these divots can be difficult to avoid by jumping over them, so you're probably better off shooting them and then just don't collect any items that they drop so they don't respawn. Once we get to the end of this hallway, we're going to drop down and take the path that we didn't take earlier. It's this one right here on the right. This is going to bring us across to a save point. You'll probably want to save before you drop down below. In this small area, we're going to need to fight six Metroids. So drop down and we're going to take the path on the right, although if you look at the bottom, you'll see where we're going to emerge later when we come up out of here. In this room, we encounter our first Metroid in this spot. It's a Gamma. I like to stay close to the doorway and try to attack this guy, or run him back into the room and turn around and fire to the left. Both strategies can work pretty well, and once that Gamma goes down, there will be five more Metroids to fight in this area, so break through the blocks on the left side and make your way to this room. Those small flying enemies are called TPOs. I'm not exactly sure what that stands for, but try to avoid them or shoot them precisely with your plasma beam as you make your way to the very top of this area. This next chamber has a bunch of lattice in it, which can easily be removed with your plasma beam, but it can actually absorb some of your missiles if you shoot it into the lattice, so try to avoid it as you put five missiles into another easy alpha metroid. Once that alpha is cleared, use your spider ball to climb up the right side and go down this tunnel where we want to go inside this metroid shell, and that will lead us to the next battle with a gamma metroid. We should actually use our plasma beam to clear some of this lattice this time, and then do your best to get underneath the Gamma Metroid. If it gets right in front of you and gives you easy shots with your missiles horizontally, then take those ones, but it's a lot easier to get multiple hits on the Gammas from below. Your Metroid counter should now be down to 19 as we make our way back over here to the left. Use your Spider Ball to get back up into this tunnel. Drop back down into the lattice room where we fought the Alpha Metroid, and then back into this chamber where the TPOs are floating around. Watch out for those guys, and we're going to take this path on the right. There is no Metroid in this room, so just cut straight across to the right, and then we're going to drop straight down here. Those things on the left side there on the wall can actually damage you, so you want to be slightly away from the wall as you go down to the bottom. And when you get to this room, switch your missiles on, because it's time to battle another Gamma Metroid. I like to try to fight this one in this spot right here on the left side. Usually you can convince it to get right above you there, and then it can be easily taken out with a bunch of missiles. If you drop all the way to the bottom, you can clear some of those bushes. Those bushes will damage you. And then you'll be able to find an energy charge. After fighting all those Metroids, 
it will feel very good to refill our health, so don't miss that opportunity before you climb up and exit this room to the left. The last two Metroids that we need to fight here in Phase 4 are Gammas, so no more easy Alphas in this one. Make your way up through this chamber. The enemies here are not very difficult to avoid, but when we get into the next chamber, that's where we'll fight our next Gamma, so get your missiles ready. To fight this guy, I like to jump up through the Metroid shell. You don't actually need to be in ball form to get through it. And then head up into this small area where it seems to be easy to get a decent number of hits on the Gamma. We have a lot of health because we just got that energy recharge, so we can be a little bit aggressive here. Clear that bush and head over to the left. There's a few more bushes to clear out in this hallway. And then we'll jump up through a Metroid shell, and we may remember that from earlier. So we saw that path before. Now we're going to head back up here, and this time we're going to make our way to the lower path on the left side. This room contains the final gamma of phase four. To beat this one, head underneath him and get into this narrow hallway where the Gamma will get sort of hung up and you should be able to easily shoot a bunch of missiles right into its face. Once he's been defeated, you'll be able to jump up through the floor here and you'll emerge through a spiky patch in this room. Head through the hallway on the left and as we walk to the left past this watery area, you'll notice the next earthquake trigger indicating the end of phase four. I had said before that we'll be passing through this chamber quite often, so make your way up through the narrow passageways and back over through the upper left exit. The music will kick in and we'll head over to the left. We're going to be headed back towards where phase three was, but this time we're going to be able to head down into an area that was filled with acidic water before. So we'll just make our way down this path and into the main part of Phase 5. Phase 5 may be the easiest phase in the entire game. You may be thinking, how could Phase 5 be easier than Phase 1 when Phase 1 only had a single Metroid for us to defeat, but Phase 5 only has a single Metroid for us to defeat as well and this time we are much more powerful. So just make your way through this passage. There's a new enemy type here called an Auk Troll. These can be easily killed with our Plasma Beam, and they often drop large HP replenishment items. So if you kill enough Auk Trolls, you should easily be able to keep your health high. There are no enemies in this room, so just climb up to the top and follow the path to the right. Over there, we'll find some more of those Octroll enemies. They're not particularly dangerous, especially with those large health refills that they drop. So just hit them with your plasma beam and make your way across to the right. Try to drop down here and just keep heading across. The only Metroid that we need to fight here in Phase 5 is a Gamma Metroid, and we're going to meet it in this room. So there he is. Switch over to your missiles, and then drop down here, where you'll be able to easily hit the Metroid between those two platforms. So just keep shooting upwards as the Metroid gets closer. And that is the only Metroid in Phase 5. Defeating that Gamma will trigger the next Earthquake, and we'll be able to head back the way we came and make our way to phase number six. So yeah, that was easy. Just head back the way that we came. When we get to phase six, phase six is really not all that much more difficult than phase five. There's not a bunch of Octroll enemies running around that will make it easy to refill our health, and yeah, there's a few more Metroids in Phase 6, but once again, it's a fairly straightforward phase, 
without any equipment for us to find. This time we'll also be able to find an energy recharge and a missile battery, so phase six really isn't that bad. Once you get to the end of this chamber, we're going to climb back up and out of phase five, and that will take us back over into phase four, or at least to the interconnected tunnels that lead between the phases. To get over to where phase six is, we want to make our way back to that same room that we need to cross multiple times that you need to roll through in ball form. We've been through it twice at this point, and we'll need to go through it a couple more times before we finish the game. So we're just going to climb up out of here, and head back over to the right, staying on the lower path here. So stay on the lower path, head over to the right, and you'll recognize this room very shortly. This is the one that I was talking about that we need to roll through in ball form. So just head on through this room as we've done before. And when we get to the bottom, we're going to exit out the right side. But this time, we're going to notice that there's a lot less acidic water in this chamber. So now, we can drop down to the bottom and make our way to phase 6. Try to watch out for those spikes though, they can deal you a bit of damage. Phase 6 feels more like a pit stop between phases 4 and 7. So we're just going to make our way all the way to the top of this chamber. When you see the two Metroid shells, you could also go to the left, but I like to go to the top first. Fighting these enemies with the plasma beam is a bit more difficult. You need to hit them precisely in the middle from above or below. Make your way up the right side of this chamber. That enemy is called a Modo, and he has a shield on the front, so to kill it, you'll need to shoot him from behind. Unless you use the wave beam though. The wave beam can shoot right through his shield. These little platforms are called flits, but we have the space jump now, so if you just want to get to the end of this area and don't touch the water below, you can just space jump across to the end. Even if you do linger in the water down there, there is a missile charge on this side and an energy charge over on the left side, so it's not that big of a deal if we take a little bit of damage. Down here we'll fight a Gamma Metroid, try to get underneath it, point your missiles upward, and shoot into its vulnerable bottom or backside. Once it's been defeated, make sure to head back over to the right and hit that missile battery one more time to top yourself off, and then head back out the way that you came. The only other Metroid in this phase is an Alpha Metroid, so we don't have a whole lot to worry about as we head back across this chamber to the left. You can use the flits or use your space jump, but we are going to be coming to an energy charge, so if you just want to run across the acidic water in the bottom, you can do that too. You shouldn't be too worried about it. Drop down here, head back over to the left, and we're making our way back to the area where we saw those two Metroid shells, and we want to take the left path there. So right here, we're heading to the left, and then we're just going to follow this along. We're going to come to another large room filled with those flits, although these ones have a little bit different movement. Most of the flits in this room will move to the right, although they occasionally will move back to the left. I would just run across the water at the bottom here or use the space jump. Just avoid those flits and make your way to the left. On the far left side of this room is where we'll find that energy charge. So we'll stop over there first and then we'll head back across the bottom right where we'll find the alpha metroid that we need to destroy. We can get right up onto it and be pretty reckless with this one because there's an energy charge right here in the room. So there's not a whole lot to worry about with fighting that guy. Just top off your energy as you exit and make your way back the same way that we came. 
there's the earthquake. Phase six is complete. That only leaves three more phases in the game. We're getting pretty close now. So you may be wondering, where exactly is phase seven? It's actually over near where phase five was. It will take a bit of backtracking to get over there, and it seems like the way phase five and six have been laid out was intentional to pad the game a little bit. In fact, when people do speedruns of Metroid 2, they usually will wade through the acidic water so that they can complete phase six before phase five, just because it's a lot more efficient to do it that way. It's certainly easier to do phase five before phase six, but if you want to save a few minutes, that is certainly something you can try. There, of course, is an energy recharge in phase six that can help you out if you do intend to go through that acidic water, and you'll want to have as many energy tanks as possible before you attempt it. For now, though, we're just going to take the normal path and head back to this room, which we'll need to pass through once more. Unless you missed something in the area beyond it, though, this will be the last time we'll need to go through this room. So say goodbye and make your way over to the left. That's going to lead here into this area that's the intersection of so many of the phases. We're going to go right past where phase five was and head deeper down into the planet. You'll notice that some of the acidic water that was there before has leaked out and now we'll be able to dig farther in and reach phase seven. I'm a little bit worried that after we kill the final Metroid here, this entire planet might like implode upon itself. But I guess that's not something that we need to worry about right now. And we'll just follow the path down to phase number seven. In phase seven, we'll finally get to battle the third different type of Metroid. We've been facing a lot of alphas and gammas so far. But now we're going to be able to add Zetas to the type of Metroids we'll have to fight. In this watery chamber, we'll meet a few new enemy types. The bomb dropping bats are called drivels, and the large bird heads are called screeks. The screeks are actually very good if you want to get some large HP replenishment items. So if you're low on health, you may want to take out a few screeks before you get through here. On the other side, we'll find another shaft that we'll be able to climb up, but before we can go through there, there's a few rocks that we need to blast through using our missiles. It's a little bit less obvious that we need to shoot through those rocks when you play on the black and white Game Boy, but here on the GameCube, you can see that they're bright orange, and that definitely makes them very obvious. Head on up to the top here and make your way to the left. Climb up to the top of this room and head over to the left, which will take you to the A on the map. And that will bring us to the larger part of phase seven. So we'll just make our way through this corridor. Not very difficult to get through here. And over here, we'll go through a tight hallway where we'll fight another Gamma Metroid. Gamma Metroids are actually pretty easy to fight in tight hallways. So just waste this guy with some missiles and make your way to the left. This chamber has a lot of vertical space above it, but before we head up there, we're going to drop down into the bottom where we can find the 19th missile upgrade. There's only three left in the game to uncover. Once you have it, head back up through that Metroid shell and make your way over to the left. You'll need to shoot through some of that lattice before you get in there. That stuff can actually damage you if you touch it. Climb up this room. There's no enemies in here, so don't worry about getting damaged. You can use your space jump to get to the top, or just try to jump from platform to platform. Up here we'll find a save point, which you'll probably want to use, and then make your way down the left shaft. 
As we drop down here and take this hallway to the left, we'll go through this room that you can use your space jump to get through so that you don't hit all the spikes. But in the next room, we're going to encounter our first Zeta Metroid, and these ones are much more serious. To fight this particular Zeta, I like to try to stay right here near the doorway, but don't go too far to the right because if the Zeta Metroid would knock you out of the door and into the next room, you'll have to start the fight over again. Just keep jumping and shooting your missiles at the Zeta. You can only hit it with horizontal shots. Don't try to shoot up or down at the Zeta Metroids. Those shots will all be misses. Once he's defeated, you're going to make your way back up the left side of this shaft, and we're going to go past where the save point was, although if you'd like to save the game, it's not a terrible idea. But we want to make our way to the passage to the right, directly above where that save chamber was. In here, we can actually jump through the ceiling on the right side, and we'll find a bunch of red missile doors here. The first one at the bottom leads to the Ice Beam. If you've been missing the Ice Beam since earlier in the game, now's your chance to pick it up again. But that's not all that's here. No. If we go all the way to the top, we'll find a few more Missile Doors. Let's see what's behind these. Well, you may be able to figure it out by looking over at the map. Behind each one of these doors are the four different beam types, which gives you the option to pick whichever beam type you want. So if you like the plasma beam, you can grab the one all the way at the top. If you'd rather use the spacer laser, you'll be able to find that one through the door next to the top, so not the topmost door, but the one right below it. And the one right above the ice beam, as you may expect, is the wave beam. Now I personally like to use the wave beam, but feel free to take your pick here. We're going to need the ice beam in phase 9, but we'll have another opportunity to pick it up in phase 9, so you don't need to feel locked into getting the ice beam right now. Pick whichever beam you're most comfortable with, and then make your way back to the bottom and head back out through the door on the left side. Which beam you choose to use here doesn't matter very much for fighting the Metroids, which we'll need to use missiles to defeat, and we're going to fight another Gamma Metroid as we climb up this wall on the left side. If you're not good at using the space jump, you can try using the spider ball instead. You'll need to try to avoid the enemies so that they don't knock you off the wall, but there are a bunch of little ledges you can try to land on if you do get knocked off. Up here is another room filled with spikes. The space jump will help you get through here, although if you're feeling kind of aggressive, you can just bounce off the spikes and quickly make your way to the left. Whatever you decide to do, over here on the left side, we're going to fight a Gamma Metroid. For this particular Gamma, I like to push right into the left and try to get right underneath it as quickly as possible. The Gammas are much easier to kill by shooting up at them from below, so if you can get underneath that guy, it'll give you a very strong advantage when fighting him. Make your way back through the spiky room whichever way you can. And then we're going to continue climbing up the left side of the Grand Cavern. As you make your way to the top, you'll notice that there is another path on the right side. That path will lead you to the top of the room where all the different beams were. We don't really need to go in there right now, we've already chosen a beam. So you can avoid that path on the right, and instead you want to make your way all the way to the top of this area. So use your spider ball if you're not as good with the space jump. And just climb up this wall. When we get to the top, there's going to be a small vertical shaft that we're going to be able to drop into using our ball form. And inside we're going to find a darkened area. You can see how good the wave beam is against that moto enemy. You can shoot it right through the shield. 
and here is that dark area where we'll need to navigate in our ball form. So you want to head over to the left, blow through a wall here, then head over to the right where we'll be able to grab a missile upgrade, then you're going to head back to the left, use your bombs to bounce through there, use the bombs again, you'll vault up and go to the left, use some bombs, and then head over to the right, and from here, you're going to bomb up, and you should be able to get up into the next area using your spider ball. And here, we'll be able to find the final energy tank. Well, it's the final relevant energy tank. There is actually another energy tank that we're going to be able to find, but we will not be able to increase our maximum hit points any higher than this. So what we want to do is to go over here onto the far left wall and use your spider ball to go all the way up onto the ceiling where you'll find that in the upper left corner we can actually bomb up to another hidden tunnel. So just use your bombs, go all the way up there, and once you reveal that tunnel at the top, we're going to find a hidden missile upgrade. So grab that missile upgrade, and that's actually not the only thing hidden up here. That's right, that extra redundant energy tank is also up there. So you might as well grab it, and then make your way back to the left. Almost exactly like the last time we found missiles hidden up in the ceiling, we're going to bomb back down the way that we came and then use our spider ball to continue along the ceiling to the right. So after you blow open that last piece, make sure that you're stuck to the wall, and then continue across the ceiling, where we're going to find a hidden ledge that leads to a Gamma Metroid. So follow the ceiling along, and when you finally get to the end, you'll be able to drop down onto the ledge, and make your way into the room on the right. There's another one of those spiky rooms that we need to traverse, and this Gamma Metroid is buried in a bunch of sand, so just blast through the sand, and when you get to the other side, keep on your wave beam for a moment and open up some area above you so that you can try to get underneath the Gamma. Anytime you have a chance to get under it, get under it and launch some missiles up onto it. And if it gets in front of you, shoot some into its face. But that's one of the trickier Gamma Metroids that you'll have to fight in this entire game. Once he's defeated, we're now down to a single digit number of remaining Metroids. Only nine are left. After fighting that Gamma, we'll drop back down on the top of this main structure. Roll into a ball and try to roll off the right side while clinging to the left of the structure so that you can use your spider ball whenever you see that rock that you need to bomb through. And that will bring you into this room with a very conspicuous Metroid shell. And it's time to fight another Zeta. This one I like to run back into this hallway and while you won't be able to hit it while it's above you, usually you can get the Zeta to swoop down right in front of Samus, and then you can just unload on it in the face with your missiles. Once that Zeta is defeated though, we don't want to leave this room just yet. In here, we're going to be able to get one of the most famous pieces of Metroid equipment. So use your spider ball to climb up here, we need to bomb through the ceiling at this point, and we'll see an area where a Chozo statue normally would be, but first we need to bomb through this rock and head over to the right side. Once again, we can bomb through to get up through here. And in this statue's hand, we're going to be able to find the game's final major upgrade, the Screw Attack. The screw attack is definitely optional, 
but you absolutely want to grab it because it is going to be key to our strategy against several different Metroid types. Using the screw attack, whenever you jump and are doing a spinning jump, you'll be able to damage enemies in the air. This is extremely helpful when you're using your space jump technique because now you can fly around through the air and if you hit any enemies, you'll kill them instead of them damaging you. Once you have the screw attack, you want to drop down this left side where we'll find a missile battery and that will restore us to 240 missiles and then we're going to follow along the ceiling right here. Now just wait for a second for that enemy to move out of the way. And then you'll spider ball up into this room where there's a gamma metroid. But you just want to jump off the wall there and come down to this spot where we can bomb through the wall and find the 22nd and final missile upgrade. That brings our total missiles to 250. Once you've done that, use your space jump to get up into this area. And I like to fight this Gamma Metroid over here on the right side. From here, whenever it gets above you, shoot up. And when it's next to Samus, shoot to the left. After defeating that Gamma, there's actually a hidden path on the left wall that will take you to an energy charge. So make sure to hit that to refill your health. And then we're going to drop back down to where we found the final missile upgrade. And we want to stay towards the right wall so that we can find a ledge that leads to another Zeta Metroid. This is the last Metroid in this area. So carefully use your space jump to get through here. You can always use that energy charge again after this fight though, so you don't have to be that careful getting through here. Once you get to the far right, this Zeta Metroid is buried in some sand, so just shoot a few wave beam shots first, and then immediately switch to the missiles, and shoot at the Zeta as soon as it swoops in front of you. If you don't catch it right as it swoops in front of you, you may just want to walk back out to the left, and re-enter the room again to reset the battle. Once that Zeta Metroid is defeated, that will trigger the earthquake here in phase 7, and we'll be ready to move on to phase number 8. Before we actually move on to phase 8 though, I am going to show you one more trick here in phase 7, but before we even get to that, Phase 8 is extremely challenging and has some of the nastiest Metroids that we will encounter in the entire game. So before you leave Phase 7, I highly recommend going back to where the energy charge is and then going back up to where the missile battery is. You may think right now we have 213 missiles, there's only six more Metroids that we need to defeat in the entire game, so how many missiles could that possibly take? Don't be stupid. Go back to this missile battery and top off your missiles. You will be surprised how many missiles you'll need to defeat the Omega Metroids that we're going to be fighting in Phase 8. There are no energy charge stations or missile batteries in Phase 8, so if you get low on health or start to run out of missiles, you're going to have to walk all the way back here to phase 7 to use this missile battery. Now before we go, let me talk to you about the secret world that's hidden here in phase 7. Do you remember this room right before the save point? If you roll into a ball and then mash select as you hold left and drop down that wall, you may be able to open a hole in the wall, which will bring you here. You need to go to the left two screens here, or you'll get stuck. So make sure to head two screens to the left. And if you actually do this before you fight the Metroids here in Phase 7, you'll be able to see some weird stuff. So I'm going to show you that here. The Metroids look very strange in this glitched out zone. So you're going to drop straight through here, where you'll encounter a glitched out Gamma Metroid. And you'll recognize this area, that's where the last missile upgrade was. 
And this room is supposed to be filled with spikes, but you see that the tile set is all messed up. But wait till you see what's in the next room. That's where we fought the last Zeta Metroid. And yeah, that Zeta Metroid is in there. But instead of sand, the whole room is save points. And you can actually save the game while you're fighting the Zeta Metroid. Do you think that that save point actually works? Let's try it out. Yes, you can actually continue here in the glitched out zone. And you can even walk out of this room and walk back in and fight that Metroid again right here in the save point room. Pretty crazy. There's a lot of weird stuff you can find in these glitched out areas. So if you want to explore them, feel free. But let's head back to the main run and make our way to phase eight. So we're just going to make our way to the bottom of this shaft and head over to the right where we'll find another place where the water has receded and we can delve deeper into the planet as we make our way to phase number eight. Phase 8 is similar to Phase 5 and 6 in that there is no equipment for us to find and just Metroids for us to battle, but these aren't going to be easy Metroids. There is one Alpha that will fight at the very beginning of Phase 8, but after that, the only Metroids that remain in the game will be the difficult kind. So just follow the path along, shoot downwards with your wave beam to take out enemies, and you'll soon make it to the next part of the game. Unlike the other phases in the game, Phase 8 will actually have multiple earthquakes that will change the water level in the caves. It's almost like it's several mini-phases all rolled into one. So we're going to head over here to the left. In this room, you can go to the left or up and you'll see if you head over to the left, there's a bunch of that acidic water that can damage you. So it seems like our best bet is to follow the path upwards. This path also splits off in a Y shape, and you can go to the left or the right. Now, both of those paths will get you where you need to go, but going to the left is much faster and much easier. So stay to the left, and go through this room that doesn't have any enemies in it at all. And in the next room, we're just going to climb to the top, avoid a few bugs, and make your way to the right. In this large room, we're going to face not one, but two Metroids. But we're not going to fight them at the same time. You'll see there's two shells in here, and an Alpha Metroid hatches when you enter the chamber. It's very easy to defeat this Alpha Metroid. Just put five missiles on it. And once that Metroid's been defeated, we're going to head out of this room to the left. There's the first earthquake of phase eight. Now you wanna make your way to the bottom of this room and head through this chamber. But once you get into the next room, we're just going to turn right back and go to that same room where we fought the Alpha Metroid, but this time when we go in there, there's going to be a new Metroid for us to fight. It's going to be our very first Omega Metroid, and the Omega Metroids are some of the nastiest Metroids you'll encounter in this entire game. The Omegas are a lot like the Zetas we fought in Phase 7, but much bigger and way more dangerous. So whenever you see one of these guys, one of the easiest ways to fight them is to try to get underneath it and then jump up and shoot it in the back. It'll take a moment before it'll turn around and start shooting fireballs at you in the correct direction. Every so often, the Omega will swoop down at you, and if you jump and use your screw attack, you can protect yourself while it's swooping, and just wait for it to stop and try to hit it again with more missiles. Most of the time the Omegas will try to stop up in the air above you, but if you can get up onto a ledge and position yourself in such a way that you can just unload a bunch of missiles into the Omega, that's probably the best way to fight them. You won't be able to damage them by hitting the legs, so you want to try to take aim for the meatier parts of the body. 
And once you've defeated your first Omega, we're going to head back the same exact way that we went before. But this time we're going to go all the way back down to where we saw that water before. A new path will have opened up for us. To be able to complete this area, we're going to need to be able to defeat three more of those Omega Metroids. So you can see why it was important that we came in here with a high amount of health and a whole lot of missiles. So here's where that water was before. Now we can drop down and make our way to the left. That will take us to the B on the map and bring us over to this side. This room has some more of those Mohik enemies. Just carefully make your way through. Use your space jump if you want to. We do have the screw attack, so that if you're space jumping around and you hit an enemy, you're likely to just kill that enemy as you move through. Over here, we're going to need to make our way through some more narrow corridors. In this one, we're just going to climb straight up to the top. Don't worry too much about those enemies. They can try to bounce across at you, but if you just shoot them from below, they'll never hit you. Those wall clinging enemies are called glow flies, and you'll notice in this area that they're always only on one side, so if you stay on the left here, you'll be able to avoid them, then stay on the right, and then stay on the left again, and that will bring you to the top of this chamber where we'll be able to head over to the left and we'll find a save point. So you'll certainly want to conserve as much health as you can before you get to the save point because you don't want to save in this area with very low HP. Once you've saved the game, we're going to climb all the way to the top of this shaft. There's no enemies here, so don't worry about it. And just make your way to the top where we'll be able to exit to the right. You can feel the sense of isolation down here. Very few things are able to survive this deep into the planet. In here, there's another vertical shaft to climb. This one has an exit on the right and the left. We're going to take the top left exit first so that we can take out another Omega Metroid before moving forward. This area looks a lot like the Norfair zone from the original game. Carefully make your way across the top of these bubble platforms, or just use your space jump to get across quickly. Equip your missiles and get ready to fight the next Omega. For this one, I like to wake it up and then head over to the right side, where we can jump up onto the ledges to get a better position to fight against this Omega Metroid. Anytime you have an opportunity to shoot it in the back, make sure to do that. But when you get up here on this ledge where the door is, oftentimes you can get the Omega to stop right in front of Samus and then you can just unload on it with a barrage of missiles. This is one of the easiest ways to fight this guy, so it's worth trying to work this Omega up into this position so that you can get those easy shots on it. If you lose a lot of health when fighting against that Omega, but you did save your game below, you may want to consider reloading your save and trying this fight again until you're able to complete the fight without losing too much health. Just keep in mind that you're going to have to fight two more Omegas before we get out of this zone. Head to the right across these bubble platforms, and in the middle of this room we'll find another area that we can drop down into, and that's the path that leads to Phase 9, the final zone. There's a bunch of acidic water in there, and although we could survive the acidic water and wade through it to the end, we cannot get through to the final zone until we've eliminated all of the other Metroids because there will be a wall blocking our path at the end. In this vertical shaft, we can use our space jump to get to the top. And up there, we'll find a save point. And so that's pretty convenient for before we fight these last two Omegas. So use that chance to save your game. So then we're going to drop all the way down to the bottom and take the path on the right. This small vertical room contains a few motos if you want to kill them for health. 
but you can just make your way through here on the right and that will take us to the first of the two omegas in this area. There's another one if we exit that chamber to the left. So we'll head all the way over to the right first. Whenever we fight this omega, this one is under some water, we want to get up on the right side and we'll use a similar strategy that we used when we fought the previous omega. By getting up onto this ledge, oftentimes we'll be able to have the Omega stop right in front of Samus where we'll be able to shoot it with a barrage of missiles right into its midsection. Use your space jump to avoid the Metroid when it's flying towards you. And whenever it's in a good spot, use a few small jumps or just keep launching missiles, whatever works, and finish this guy off. Oh, in this position it was even turned around backwards. Not bad. All right. We have about 178 HP left, so that should be enough to face one more Omega Metroid. As long as we can survive to phase nine, there is going to be an energy charge and a missile battery in there. And there are pretty much no enemies until we get to the very end for us to worry about. So we just need to take out this last Omega, and we are home free to make it to the end. So we'll head through the left path down here, cross over a few more of those bubble platforms that look like the Norfair Zone, and when we enter the room on the left side, you know that it contains the final Omega. This room is almost the mirror image of the one that we were in before, although there's no water in it this time. So what we want to do is go up onto the ledge on the far left side. That's probably the best vantage point for fighting against this Omega. Now, if the Omega Metroid goes way into the wall, you won't be able to damage it, so you'll need to lure it out of there and try to keep it on the right side. But if you can get it to stop right in front of you, just like this one's doing, that is absolutely ideal. And you'll be able to unload a bunch of missiles into it and finish it off quite quickly. And that's it. With the final Omega Metroid defeated, another earthquake will be triggered that will lead us to the final phase of the game. We know where to go from here. We're going to head back to that chamber that contained the water before. And of course this time we'll find that it's empty and we'll be able to proceed through. So just hop up through here, take out that moto enemy if you would hope to get some health back. And we should be able to make our way up and to the left. At the top of this room, you could save the game if you feel so inclined, but there will be another save point that we'll reach in Phase 9, so it's not terribly important. Head over here, we're making our way to the middle of this room, and that's where we're going to drop down. As expected, the water has disappeared from this chamber, and now we'll be able to wrap around to the final phase. This deep into the planet, we're practically at the core. There are no enemies down here, so we're just going to take a quiet walk to the end and reflect on our experiences as we make our way to the Metroid Queen. The final battle with the Metroid Queen is going to require a lot of firepower, so we are going to need to stop at the missile battery and the energy charge station before we go in there. But before we get up to that point, we can cross through some of these harmless pools of water as we make our way zigzagging back and forth across these lower chambers. Over on the left side, there's a few more pools and we'll just need to jump up to the top. This path here leads to the right. And in this room, if you walk in the watery area, Pay attention to the look of the stones. Some of the stones have a dark black outline on top of them. If you walk on those stones, you'll drop through to the area below, which won't deal you any damage, it's just kind of annoying. 
you can see some more of those drop through stones right there in that pool as well. So you can kind of see the difference of what they look like. So try to avoid those stones that drop you down to the lower layers and just make your way through these chambers. If you're having trouble identifying where you'll fall through the water, you can just use your space jump here to fly across these rooms. Once again, we'll climb up, higher and higher, making our way closer and closer to the Queen's Chamber. Here is the game's final save point, so take this opportunity to save the game. And up here, there's sort of an intense gravity in that water, so you'll need to use your space jump to get out of it. And then you wanna make your way over to the far right side. Use your space jump to get as high up onto these ledges on the right as you can. And when you find the right wall, that's where you're going to wanna use your spider ball. So just use the spider ball and climb up the right wall. You'll go up past a small divot in the ceiling and continue on to the left. So go across the ceiling to the left and up here, this is where we're going to find that energy recharge and the missile battery. So make sure that you go up into this room before you move forward. You will be very happy to have that recharge and then continue to use your spider ball to go across the ceiling to the left. In here, we'll be able to find the ice beam. If you don't have the ice beam already, make sure to come in here and collect the ice beam. You are going to need it moving forward. So use your spider ball and head up here. In this room, there's a broken Chozo statue. Did the Queen Metroid break it? I don't think the Metroids like the Chozo very much. Now that we have the Ice Beam, we're ready for the final rooms. So use your Spider Ball one more time when you get to the bottom of this room, and we're going to continue along the ceiling to the left. So this will bring us back into the big main chamber. Just follow the ceiling over to the left, and that's going to take us on the main path that will lead us to the end. You know when the music changes to this theme, that we are very close to the final boss. So far in this game, our Metroid counter has always decreased as we've taken out Metroid after Metroid, reducing them down to the last one. But the queen has been laying some eggs, and we can see one right above us. Now the Metroid scanner says there are nine Metroids we need to defeat. And the new eight that just appeared are the original style from the first game. To defeat these larval Metroids, you need to first freeze them with the ice beam, and then hit them with five missiles. This one's pretty easy to defeat by shooting it downwards with the ice beam and then getting underneath it to hit it with the five missiles. These Metroids can become unfrozen very quickly if you don't hit them with the missiles fast. So don't give the Metroids a chance to thaw out. As soon as you freeze one, quickly hit it with five missiles. If you do get grabbed by a Metroid, you can try morphing into a ball and bombing to make it let you go but the better way is to use your space jump and try to get to a door. When you pass through a door, the Metroid will let you go, and while you're space jumping, the screw attack will actually prevent the Metroid from dealing you any damage. So as long as you keep the screw attack going, you can get to a door and make the Metroid let you go, but make sure that you head back through and kill all of the Metroids before you move forward. There's one that you'll take out as soon as you enter this room. The second one in this room can be tricky to deal with. As soon as you see it, try to get underneath it to get the free shot in and then hit it with the missiles. But if you do get caught by that Metroid, just space jump over to the door on the left side and then head back in to finish off that Metroid before proceeding. This one's pretty easy to catch on the bottom of that ledge so that you can shoot it downwards with your ice beam. 
And if you get grabbed by this Metroid, you're right near the door already, so you can just head through and then quickly hit it with your ice beam when you head back through to the left. If you've cleared all of the Metroids, the path to the Queen will be opened. So just space jump past these spikes and drop down on the right side. As soon as you get into the room with the Queen, get up onto this left ledge and hit her with as many missiles as you can. If you're mashing the button, you will still get credit for all of those hits. She does not have invincibility frames. Then you just want to stay down here in the lower right corner. When she extends her head down here, you can unload some missiles right into her mouth. And if you're feeling ambitious, you can actually roll into the mouth, roll down into the queen's stomach, and launch some bombs which do a good bit of damage. It's much safer to just fight her with missiles, but if you're getting low on missiles, then you can use the bomb technique to deal some more damage. Anytime she shoots these red balls at you, you can use the screw attack to remove them. And if you just stay down here in the lower right corner, point your missiles right into the queen's mouth, it won't be long until she fades out of existence, and we're able to make our way to the end of the game. The Metroid counter says zero, but as we head over here to the left, a baby is hatched. This baby Metroid will actually help us escape this area. Now there are different endings in this game based on how much time it takes you to finish the game, and right now the clock is still running. You need to finish the game in under three hours to get the so-called best ending, or at least the ending that you get for finishing the game the fastest. You'll get another ending if you finish between 3 and 5 hours, and the slowest ending is for any times over 5 hours. So if you think you're close to that 3 hour mark, you definitely want to hurry up right now, but we actually have plenty of time. I'm pretty sure that this full run took less than 2 hours. As we emerge on the surface of SR388, we can use our space jump to climb up to the top of this large plateau, and then we'll cross over to the right, with the baby Metroid following us the entire way. Once we get to the end, we'll drop down, and on the other side of this cliff, we'll find Samus's ship, and we'll be able to evacuate this planet once and for all. And that's it. We've done it. We've beaten Metroid 2 The Return of Samus. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Well, there's really not much of an ending here to talk about. It's mostly just a credit roll, but at the very end of the credits, we're going to see our final game time, and we'll see one of the three final endings. Now, of course, this is You Can Beat Video Games, so I am going to show all three of the different endings, and we're going to start with the slowest ending that you'll get for finishing five hours or longer. So whenever we get to the end, we're going to see that ending first, and then I'll show you the other two before the video wraps up. Do you think it was wise for Samus to rescue the baby Metroid? Or should she have terminated that soul-sucking jellyfish with extreme prejudice? For now, it seems like the galaxy is a safer place to live, but the threat of the Metroid still remains as long as a single one survives. We'll get to witness firsthand the consequences of Samus's compassion when the story continues in Super Metroid. But as the credits wrap up, let's take a look at those three different endings. The first of the three endings that we're going to see doesn't look a whole lot different than it does right now. It just continues this animation of Samus running, and if you took more than five hours to finish Metroid 2, then Samus may continue running forever. Yeah, that's the curse that she's going to have to deal with because you took so long to finish the game. 
Or maybe you just liked exploring it, I don't know. Let's take a look at the middle ending. This is the one that you would get for finishing between three and five hours. So whenever the end comes up, Samus does a pose in her armor. But of course the ending that everybody gets the most excited about is the one that you get for finishing in under three hours. And this is the one where Samus removes the armor and reveals what she looks like underneath. And of course she's wearing a camisole and some underwear. And she even lets her hair down. So I do like that they ended it with the hair blowing in the breeze. Well, I hope this video was able to help you finally beat Metroid 2 and eliminate the Metroid Menace once and for all. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more alien monsters that we need to exterminate. And that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.